Well, the buy now, pay later space has taken up once again my newsfeed, my attention, my time, everything with Zip just today jumping up 38%. Which, by the way, is a huge jump and has just catapulted them to an all new time high. So in today's video, I want to go over what happened. How did we get to this crazy jump in price and my overall thoughts on Zip moving forward? So basically, Afterpay, uh, I mean Zip, made two major announcements today that the market really seemed to like. And to be honest with you, like I thought they were still in a trading hold. I didn't even know that they were trading. I knew that the trading hold announcement came out yesterday. And then today, I thought they were still in it until Wednesday. But no, they started trading and the shares jumped up drastically. And I wasn't aware of this until somebody had actually notified me. First story I post on this page, but are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Link to the IG is down below. I haven't been as active on it, but I will try to be a little bit more active, especially in the stories, just to share what I'm doing on a daily basis. So go check it out. No promises about replying to every single message because I do try to not be on as often because it's too distracting. And whilst you're down there, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. So anyways, let's get into it. Zip has actually made an announcement that they'll be buying the remaining portions of a company based in New York called QuadPay, who's the buy now, pay later leader in America at the moment. What this will allow Zip to do is reach five different countries after this acquisition. This acquisition is meant to be their move over to the United States. And what this will allow them to do is have $3 billion in TTV, that's total transaction value, an annualized revenue of $250 million and $3.5 million in customers and over 26,000 partnering merchants. Now, for many of us who might have seen this news, it might have come just, I guess, out of nowhere, right? Like why this purchase, why this acquisition and why now? So to understand this, I think you have to have a look at when companies are trying to grow outside of Australia, because remember, Australia is a very small market and only makes up 2% of the world's economy. So for any company that's trying to make a big move over to the US, generally there's two ways that they're gonna go about doing it. You can either go and try to deploy lots of money in going into a new market internationally, marketing there, and then conveying what your product or your service is to a new demographic who have absolutely no idea of who you are. Now that brings a lot of complications within itself. Just because it's a different market, it's a different culture, there's a different type of psychology behind consumerism, there's a lot of things that you have to consider. Just think about any startup that's trying to start and starting to go global. They have to do what? raise a lot of investor capital to go and make these things happen because it's not just marketing because you need people on the back end to strategically make it happen and do it very well. And we can see this in Afterpay who's doing this in two folds. First is by capital raising that's issuing equity out to the market and raising capital in that way. And number two is taking on more debt from financial institutions to expand their operations, which by the way, has been very successful both for the business and for the share price as well. Now, the second way that you can penetrate a new market internationally is by actually purchasing or acquiring another business or a company who already has customers within that space and knows it very well. Not only are you taking over the product or service, you're getting the team, you're getting the expertise, you're getting everything that comes along with the company that's made it so successful, well, hopefully that's made it successful in that space. And ZipPay in this is taking both approaches. First, it's acquiring QuadPay in the US. And secondly, it's also taking on more capital through a capital raising, which I'll touch on later on. That's, that's a lot of ons. Now guys, I totally understand that they're looking to make an expansion over in the US. But I had a look at the presentation that they had put out and I had a look at the retail partnerships that QuadPay has. And honestly, from that list, I probably only recognized two retailers. So it's not like they're really partnered with big brand names that we might all be familiar with, but look, let's be honest, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not a shoe shopper, so I only shop from a few brands and that's really all I know. Main ones are Nike and Ralph Lauren, right? Those are the main brands that I shop from. And so maybe if, have a look at the list. M maybe you guys might recognize some of these names here, but personally, I don't. Actually comment in the comment section down below if you know more than half of these brands on this list. I'd be very interested to know. Again, I don't shop too much, so man, who am I to comment? So with all this optimism behind this acquisition, the surge in share price and everything like that, is it really gonna make a dent in Afterpay? And if you've watched my previous video, you know that it's gonna make not a single dent in Afterpay. Well, look, 
maybe a minor dent, but it's not really gonna mean much in terms of the big picture for our Afterpay at all. Because the US is a big enough market where both parties and a few others can probably coexist and well, be okay. And like I mentioned in my previous video, this is a market share play. Basically the company with the most market share in the space wins. And that really all boils down to two things, having the right networks to get the right retailers on your platform. And number two is having the right type of marketing to strategically get yourself out there. So that's the first part of the announcement. The second part is actually the capital raising, which involves CVI investments, which is part of the SIG group. I know a lot of abbreviations, a big investment firm that looks into high growth tech companies. Now the $200 million capital raising is well for the purpose of expanding their growth over in the US markets. And the good thing is raising capital through this way is much easier and quicker than trying to bypass all the ASX regulations and all the processes to have a share purchase plan out there so you can get the money from the market. Now in regards to all of this, Larry Diamond, Zip's CEO and co-founder mentioned that Zip has spent a significant amount of time with the founders of QuadPay who share the same view about the outdated credit card system. That and also that the US is a crucial part of the international strategy. And we're impressed by QuadPay being the first to come into the market with Stripe in providing virtual payment cards. It's essentially now like when people pay with their phones, like the virtual cards that are in your phone and you just tap and pay. Yeah, that's what it is. So like I mentioned before, in this acquisition, they're looking to utilize the team, the technology, the expertise that QuadPay has in the US so they don't have to build it themselves. They don't have to expend capital to go over there and make it happen, take risk, take guesses, and all this other type of stuff. They've also raised capital over in the US to make the transition a lot easier. And if you're looking to shift money, it's already there in that market in which you're looking to grow within. And so with that being said, obviously they're looking to gain market share and also to revolutionize the finance space. But I'm rather cynical whenever that type of you know talk comes up because the finance space, much like health and education, are some of the hardest spaces to change and shift. And yes, I know buy now and pay later is new. And yes, I know a lot of people have made money from it and all that type of stuff. And there's all this, you know, positivity about it. But really the method isn't any different than having a credit card. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos and people are well aware of it. There is nothing proprietary about it. That's why there's so many companies that keep popping up with some sort or equivalent of a buy now pay later system and are able to go public and raise money and do all these type of things. So. Finance space, yes, there are gonna be heaps of players that are gonna come in. Is there anything proprietary about this stuff or can they build anything that's proprietary that they could claim as their own and revolutionary into this space? I really, really doubt it. And so guys, I know I haven't gone through a lot of the numbers and the revenues and all that type of stuff that I normally go through in like a more in-depth type of video. This one, I just wanted to get out as soon as possible. So in my opinion, just my opinion, so don't get mad or whatever, I do definitely see the share going up to seven to $10. Remember, ZipPay is one of the OGs in the buy now, pay later space. I'm seriously mind blown that it was stuck at $2 to $3 for so long. I understand they didn't make any bigger moves in comparison to the older brother in Afterpay, but it's one of the old dogs and it's been around for longer than a lot of these new companies that have come up and have gotten much more traction. And I'm basing my prediction based off on how Afterpay has slowly climbed up. Any single time there was good news, any single time there was an update, whether it was just a random update they would throw out or a quarterly update, the share price generally just went up. And it went up not because the balance sheet got any better. It didn't go up because any fundamental metric got better. It went up because there were more merchants, there was higher revenues, and there were more customers. And what do those three things scream? Market share. They went up because they started to gain a lot more market share and a lot more tractions in a lot more places outside of Australia. So yeah, for me, I am quite bullish on zip pay, which is why I'm a shouter, duh. And with the trajectory going up and continuing to trend that way, this can only mean good things for the company as revenues continue to grow and everything else along with it continues to grow. So I'm happy to see where this kind of goes and whether Zip continues to go up. I hope it continues to go up because I've got a fair chunk of change within the company. So he's hoping for some more gains. And that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this recap. I really did try to get this done, recorded and hopefully out as soon as possible because the news did come kind of like just past midday for me 
And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.